Right, so twelve one goes over understanding rational expressions and radicals. With these rational expressions, we're talking about rational exponents, so exponents that are fractions, and as well as negative numbers. Um, we're going to start by looking at what a radical expression is and the parts of that radical expression. So a radical expression is just an expression that includes a square root symbol. Those square root symbols have something called an index, which is the little number that's attached to that radical symbol. The number underneath the radical is called a radicand. You're going to hear the word index a lot in this section because we're going to be looking at a rational exponent and rewriting the rational expression in radical form. And that rational exponent is what helps you find your index that's attached to the radical. If we look at the first section of your notes, we're just rewriting the expression using radicals. When we rewrite this, the first thing that you want to look at is the term that is your base. That base is going to be underneath the radical. If it is raised to a power that's a fraction, like example A is, the numerator of that fraction is going to be the power. The denominator is going to be the index. So the power is going to stay on that base, and the denominator, which is your index, is going to become the little number attached to the radical. So this 64 to the power of 1 third, the 1 is going to stay as your power. The 3 is going to become your index. So we're taking the cube root of 64. Now this is not asking us to simplify. It's just asking us to rewrite using radicals. So we're going to leave it in the form of this cube root of 64. And the reason why we do not put that 1 attached to it in the exponent is because when something is not raised to the power, it's understood that that power is 1. For example, B, we have 81 to the power of 1 fourth plus 9 to the power of 1 half. So again, this 1 on both of these are going to be your power or your exponent on the number that stays with the number. The denominator is your index for both of these. So this is going to give us the fourth root of 81 plus the square root of 9. Now with that square root of 9, you'll realize that it does not have an index on it. And that's because when a radical is not raised, or not, it does not have a, sorry, when the radical does not have an index, it's understood that it is a 2. For example, C, we have 8 to the power of 1 third. So again, that 1 is your power, the 3 is your index, so we're taking the cube root of 8. Again, we're leaving it as the cube root of 8 because it's not telling us to simplify. For example, D, we have 16 to the power of 1 half plus 27 to the power of 1 third. So this is telling us to take the square root of 16 plus the cube root of 27. For the next part, we're going to be simplifying numerical expressions with rational exponents. So we're just rewriting using radicals with these. However, now our numerator in this fraction is a number other than 1. Again, the numerator is going to stay as the power on our base, and then the, the index will come from the denominator of that fraction in your exponent. So for example, A, we have 27 to the power of 2 thirds. The 27 is raised to the power of 2 thirds. So that 2 is going to stay as your power. The 3 is going to become your index. So this is going to say, find the cube root of 27 squared. Now you can write it like this, or you can write it as the cube root of 27 raised to the second power. I prefer, prefer writing it this way to where it's in parentheses and raised to the second power, but that's just my preference. They mean the same exact thing. However, I like I said, I just prefer the one on the right, specifically because it's a lot easier to find the cube root of 27 and then square whatever that number is, opposed to taking 27, multiplying it by itself, and then finding the cube root of a much larger number. So again, either one of these is acceptable. It's totally up to you which one you want to use. 
for example, b, we have 25 to the power of 3 halves. So that 3 is going to be the power that stays with the 25. The 2 is your index. So this is going to be the square root of 25 raised to the third power. And again, we don't need the index of that 2 on that square root because it is understood when there is not an index, it's automatically a 2. For example, C, we have 32 to the power of 3 fifths. So the 3 is going to be our power. The 5 is your index. So we're doing the fifth root of 32 raised to the third power. And for example, D, we have 4 to the power of 5 halves minus 4 to the power of 3 halves. The 5 is your power. The 3 is your power. The 2 on both of these is our index. So we're going to have the square root of 2 raised to the fifth power minus the square root of 2 of, I'm sorry, this is the square root of 4, not the square root of 2. The square root of 4 raised to the fifth power minus the square root of 4 raised to the third power. For our last part, we're working with negative exponents. With these negative exponents, you need to make sure that you turn them into positive ones before you work with them. The reason why is because an answer is not in simplest form if you have a negative power on it. In order to turn these negative powers into positive powers, you're going to take the reciprocal of the term that that power is attached to. That will turn the power to be positive, and then you can simplify it. So we look at example 3a. We're just rewriting using uh, positive exponents. If we look at the example a, we have 8 to the power of 1 third. This is the same exact thing as saying to take the reciprocal of that 8 in order to turn it to be a positive power. So that's 1 over 8 to the 1 third power. This would then give us, if we were, if we were writing it as a um, radical, so in a radical expression, this would also be equal to 1 over the cube root of 8. If you remember what we did in, the, in, I think it was like the first or second quarter of this year, you would not be able to leave that radical in the denominator. We're not going to get through that, go through that right now, but this is just purposely rewriting these expressions using positive powers. So the whole thing here, the whole idea is to give your answer with a positive exponent. For example, b, we have 9 to the power of negative 1 half. Turn that 1 half into a positive 1 half by taking the reciprocal of that 9. So it's 1 over 9 to the power of 1 half. Now, another way you can write these is to take the 1 half or sorry, the 1 ninth, and have it be the power on everything. That means the same exact thing. So if you're more comfortable giving me what's in blue, that's fine. If you want to give me what's in red, it's the same exact thing. For example, C, we have 27 to the power of negative 2 thirds. So again, turn that negative 2 thirds into a positive. We do 1 over 27. If you want to do it to where it's positive two-thirds on the outside, you can. And for our last example, D, we have 16 to the power of negative one-half. So turn that negative one-half into a positive one-half, and it'll be 16, 1 over 16 to the power of one-half.